Well, good morning. Welcome to the gathering. It's great to be here with you uh, again this week. It, I feel like this is our, our time to connect uh, as family and friends and community. And so, yeah, welcome to the gathering, to our live stream. Uh, just a couple things as we get started. Uh, as we sing this morning, uh, you can go on to our website, thegatheringchurch.net, thegatheringchurch.net, and it says Sunday Song Sheet, and you can click on that, and it'll pull up to the, the lyrics to the songs that we're going to be singing this morning, so you can sing along with us or just uh, even reflect as you listen to them um, on the words that we're singing. Uh, if you're new with us this morning, uh, there's also a big button there. It says, I'm new, and we would love to connect with you, communicate with you. Um, as you join us each week, and uh, you can fill out the form there, and it shoots an email to us, and, and then we'll, we'll keep you up to date um, on what we're doing. Uh, I just want to give a shout out to some folks this morning as we uh, gather. Uh, first of all, I want to always thank uh, Matt and Gabe up in the booth who are doing the live stream stuff for us, all the technology and helping us navigate through that. We are really grateful for them, and it's great to have Chelsea and Betsy singing along uh, with me this morning as we, as we enter into worship. So... Uh, I always forget to do this because I know sometimes we have people new joining us online. My name is Peter, and I had the privilege of being the pastor of, of our community called the Gathering Covenant Church. And um, so as we gather every week, I always remind us of this, and I'll probably never stop. We believe that following Jesus is the best way to live. Um, and as we follow Jesus, uh, the way in which we do that, we do this together together. We're learning how to live and love like Jesus in a world that I think even more so today <laughs> needs uh, the light of Jesus in their lives. And our hope is that as we live out our faith every day during the week and all of the places and all of the relationships through all the circumstances that we find ourselves in, that people would be drawn to the Jesus that they're seeing in us. And that's the reason we worship together in this moment is to celebrate that life that we're living and at the same time uh, be challenged to grow in some new ways or, or to even practice um, some spiritual dis disciplines in the midst of this moment. So um, we're going to enter into worship now, and um, I want to um, just share kind of where I'm at right now. Uh, I met with a bunch of pastors on a Zoom call, and, uh, you know, it's like every week we're, we're just journeying through uh, uncertainty and just all kinds of stuff in our culture and politics and all that. And we're kind of talking with one another, and we're, we're sort of all at a loss for words. You know, all, the only thing we could, we could say or just recognize is the world needs a Savior. <laughs> Actually, the world needs the Savior. And, and what we're talking about is Jesus. And, and really, that's that's all we could articulate in many ways because we've been talking about the same things over and over again and we realize that the solution is Jesus himself. And so I found myself um, praying the same things over and over again, but, but I so appreciate our rich church history that we have, especially many of you who've grown up in the church. There's just prayers that we pray together. Uh, there's creeds that we recite together. And we've moved away from that in many ways. And, and for me this morning, I, I just thought maybe we could begin our time with the Lord's Prayer. And so if you know it at home, just say it along with us. If you don't know it, just listen. But um, I'm going to use the prayer that Jesus taught his disciples to pray. And it wasn't for anything specific. It was covering everything. And so let's, let's begin uh, with the Lord's Prayer. So pray with me. Our Father, who art in heaven... Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Strength will rise as we wait upon the Lord. We will wait upon the Lord. We will wait upon the Lord. Strength will rise as we wait upon the Lord. We will wait upon the Lord. We will wait upon the Lord. Strength will rise. 
strength will rise as we wait upon the Lord. We will wait upon the Lord. We'll wait upon the Lord. Strength will rise as we wait upon the Lord. We will wait upon the Lord. We will wait upon the Lord. Our God, you reign forever. Our strong as we wait upon the Lord. We will wait upon the Lord. We will wait upon the Lord. Strength will rise as we wait upon the Lord. We will wait upon the Lord. We will wait upon the Lord. Our God, you reign forever. Our hope, our strong deliverance. As we wait upon the Lord, we'll wait upon the Lord. We will wait upon the Lord. Strength will rise as we wait upon the Lord. We will wait upon the Lord. We will wait upon the Lord. Heavenly Father, we do come to you this morning. We want to wait on you. We want to wait in such a way that we're waiting with hope and expectation for all that you're going to do, for all that you're going to do. And Lord, we know, unlike the world, when things are destroyed, we often just see things laying in ruin, but not you. No, you're a God who takes all that's broken and you restore it, you make it new. And Lord, we know that out of the ashes, you can build new things, new things that are greater than what we ever thought. So Lord, we ask that you would take our lives right now, our circumstances, our hearts, our feelings, our emotions, and make them new. Water you turned into wine Open the eyes of the blind There's no one like you None like you Into the darkness you shine Out of the ashes we rise There's no one like you None like you Our God is greater Our God is stronger God you are higher than any other Our God is healer Awesome in power Our God Our God Water you turned into wine Open the eyes of the blind there's no one like you, 
kind like you. Into the darkness you shine. Out of the ashes we rise. There's no one like you. None like you. Our God is greater. Our God is stronger. God, you are higher than any other. Our God is healer, awesome in power. Our God, our God. And if our God is for us, then who could ever stop us? And if our God is with us, then what could stand against? And if our God is for us, then who could ever stop us? And if our God is with us, then what could stand against? Our God is greater, our God is stronger. God, you are higher than any other. Our God is healer, awesome in power, our God, our God. Our God is greater, our God is stronger. God, you are higher than any other. Our God is healer, awesome in power, our God, our God. Hear our cry, O God of heaven, Jesus' hope to every heart. We are lost without your glory. We are lost without you, God. Let's sing that again. Hear our cry. Hear our cry, O King of heaven, Jesus' hope to every heart. We are lost. Without your glory, we are lost without you, God. Be the fire, be the fire that burns within us. Flames of love that purify. Send your power and your salvation. Let us see your kingdom come. Only you can move mountains. Only you can heal our land. Christ alone, our hope and glory. Christ alone, in you we stand. Turn your eyes, turn your eyes, and show us mercy. How we need the Father's love. Lead us home and out of darkness with your gospel burning bright. Only you can move the mountains. Only you can heal our land. Christ alone, our hope and glory. Christ alone, in you we stand. Our God is here. We believe our King is coming. Christ alone, in you we stand. We believe our God is mighty. We believe our God is here. We believe our King is coming. Christ alone, in you we stand. Only you can move the mountains. Only you can heal our land. Only our hope and glory. Christ alone, in you we stand. Only you can move the mountains. Only you can heal our land. Christ alone, 
our hope and glory. Christ alone, in you we stand. Hear our cry, O King of heaven. Jesus, hope to every heart. We are lost without your glory. We are lost without you, God. Oh Lord, we know that you are always at work. You're always working. You're always up to something. We've seen it in the past, and we want to see it in our present. And when we put our hope in what is yet to come, Lord, help us to wait with hope and expectation, knowing that, yes, you are at work. We know that you, you alone can heal. You can heal us. You can heal our relationships. You can heal our culture. You can heal our land. You can heal those that are sick, and you can heal those that are blind. Lord, we lay that all at your feet. And we can celebrate knowing that in the midst of everything, in the midst of everything, we can rest in you. We can rest in you. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, let me change up gears here. Just move a few things. All right. Well, like I said earlier, it's great to be with you this morning. And uh, we have just a few announcements um, that I, I want to bring to your attention um, so that we're all on the same page since we're not together all the time. Um, so first of all, I want you to save the date. Next Sunday at 1130, so after the live stream, kind of linger around your computer. Uh, we're going to have our partners in ministry meeting. We're going to have a family gathering as a church community. And we call it Partners in Ministry because we share in the ministry of this church. Old school would be your members, but we look at it as a partnership. We're joining together uh, to be like Jesus in our world. And so it's going to be a great morning because in the midst of everything that we've been experiencing the past year, which is pretty crazy to think that in a couple of months we will have been enduring this COVID crisis for a year, uh, God's been at work. He's been doing great things. We want to share with you or remind you of all of the great things that God has been doing. And at the same time, uh, we're going to talk about things that are ahead. I'm excited about the opportunities we have ahead. And part of it is just preparing ourselves for what's next. And, and some of that has to do with our facility. And uh, we have a budget that we need to approve. And uh, different people on the leadership team uh, will be involved in it. So it's going to be on Zoom. And we will record it, but it will be on Zoom. We'd love to have everybody in on it so that you can actually be a part of the conversation. So if you don't know how to do Zoom, find somebody who knows how to Zoom and learn how to Zoom. Isn't that funny? A year ago, we didn't know what that word was, Zoom. So here we go. Here we go, Zoom. Um, secondly, um, our offerings. Uh, thank you for those of you who faithfully give each and every week or every month and have been continuing to give. Uh, and through your tithes and offerings, it's what enables to sustain us as a church as we keep going. And God has been good in terms of that. Um, but it's always a growth area for all of us. So I just want to encourage you to continue to do that. You can give uh, online. Uh, you can mail it in. You can drop it off here in our mail slot, whatever works uh, for you. Uh, but thank you for those of you who have been faithful in that regard. And then our growth groups have started. And we've had a couple of webinars. Some of you have been on that. So we could talk about the ins and outs of it. But it's really simple. And we'd love to have everybody in a growth group. So uh, beginning this week, we have one on Monday night at 7. We have one on Tuesday night at 7. We have one on Thursday night at 5. We gather in person, distant, outside. It's for young adults, 5 o'clock at my house. And so uh, we'd love to invite you into one of those growth groups. I think it's really important in this season, especially we've been talking about growing together, um, that that everybody's in a growth group. And that's the desire of our heart. So you can text me, you can email me, you can call me. Uh, we want to get everybody in one. If you've been in one and it didn't work for you, dive in again. Give it another chance. If you've never been in one and you just want to try it out one night, then try it out one night. You might discover that it's incredibly life-giving. And then last announcement is just uh, food pantry. 
So I was working out data, and it'll change by the time we get to our partners meeting next week. But do you realize that since this began and the food pantry began and God started it, uh, we have handed out over 5,300 family food boxes. Over 5,300 family food boxes. Is that not amazing? So um, Susan, yep, we, got, we got a few people in the house clapping here. Um, that's got to work, I'll tell you. And it's meeting the needs of people. And I'm going to talk about it a little bit more as we teach this morning. Um, but anyway, Susan, our administrative volunteer, kudos to Susan, man. She is amazing. Thank you, Susan. But she's got, a, she's got a rhythm. She's got a routine. And so I asked her to tell me every Sunday what, what are like the specific items she needs. Because we've got donations coming in of all different kinds. So this is what she told me this morning. We need eggs. And we need jelly. Eggs and jelly, which means we must have a ton of peanut butter. We need eggs and we need jelly. So you could bring some down. Betsy and I will be here till 1130 uh, ish. And you can bring them down during the week. And if not, um, uh, bring them by uh, my house if you have to um, and drop them off. But we need eggs and jelly. So I think that's all the announcements I've got. All right. So let's let's continue. And We've been in this uh, series called Waymakers. We've been going through the letter of Ephesians, Paul's letter to this young, diverse um, church that has no religious back, background. They're a Gentile church. They're people who've come to know who Jesus is. And he's written this wonderful letter to them so that they can grow into the, the body of Christ, be the followers of Jesus as God intended. And it's this, this great letter. So if you have your Bible, you can open it up to Ephesians 6, 18 through 24. Today, we finish the letter. Today, we finish the letter. So, um, the food pantry. You know, we've been handing out food, but I, I honestly, as I've been watching, I think the greatest gift of the food pantry has been the gift of prayer. Many of you may not know this, but every car that comes through the people are asked, can we pray for you? Everybody says yes. Everybody says yes. And we pray for them. And we have a prayer that we, we pray. And the prayer often sounds like this. I'll, I'll, I'll say the prayer to you. Um, Father in heaven, I thank you for, let's say his name's Juan. Father in heaven, I thank you for Juan. I thank you for who he is. Father, I pray that you would watch over and guard and protect and provide everything for he and his family. And may he know the joy and peace and hope that come from you. In Jesus' name, amen. A, a simple prayer, right? And yet, when we pray for folks, and I've been out there, they melt, they break. The burden they carry is great. We've been doing this for weeks, the crazy thing about prayer is as you get to know people and they start to get to know you, you become friends. In that constant weekly contact, they begin to share more of who they are, more of their lives, more of their needs. When we say, can we pray for you? We can actually now say, how can we pray for you? And they share things with us. There's this deep intimacy happening. There's this work of God happening. And I think that's the greater thing. So I've been reflecting on, like, like, what's happening in the dynamic of that moment of prayer? I think what prayer is doing is it's creating comfort. It's creating comfort for those who need comfort right now. We talked last week about people grieving in so many different ways. Praying for people is creating comfort. Um, it's giving them hope. When they may not be thinking about it, it comes and it speaks hope into their life. It reminds them of where their strength is going to come from. It has healing to it. We're finding that as we pray for people, God is at work in their lives and things are actually happening. It connects us to them. We're becoming very close with everyone that comes through the food pantry because of the prayer. We're becoming close. Our relationships are growing deep. And that's one of the things that Paul said. You know, He hoped that our roots would go so deep that we would understand the depth, the width, the height, and the length of God's love for us. And through prayer, that's happening. It's happening. It's such a gift. I wish all of you could be out there praying for people, cultivating those relationships, and seeing that. Prayer is restoring. 
Prayer is restoring their lives. In the midst of the craziness of no jobs and all that kind of stuff. Lack of food. How am I going to pay my bills? Struggling with the virus. There's something restorative happening in it. There's something restorative happening in it. So what is prayer? Now the obvious is, I talk and God listens. (laughs) Well, I think it's more than that. Um, Richard Foster, no relation to me. Uh, An author I'm fond of, a person who's just written some great books. And he's written a book on prayer. And um, let me read this to you. Um, It's just an excerpt of one of his greater works. Um, But I'm going to read this slowly and I want you to listen. Prayer is the heart's true home. But you see, we have been in a faraway country. It's been a country of climb and push and shove. It's been a country of noise and hurry and crowds. The heart of God is an open wound of love because of this distance and preoccupation of ours. God mourns that we do not draw near to him. God weeps over our obsession with muchness and manyness. And I want to add the word division. And God is seeking after us. God seeks us like the father rushing out to embrace the prodigal. God seeks us like the woman who will leave no stone unturned in her determination to find that lost coin. God seeks us like the shepherd searching, searching, searching for one lost sheep. God is seeking us. God invites us to come home, home to where we belong, home to serenity and peace and joy, home to intimacy and acceptance and affirmation. God welcomes us into the living room of his heart where we can put on old slippers and share freely. God welcomes us into the bedroom of his rest, where we can be naked and vulnerable and free. It is also the place of deepest intimacy, where we can know and be known to the fullest. And it doesn't matter if we have little faith or none. It doesn't matter if we have been bruised and broken by the pressures of life, It doesn't matter if our prayers have grown cold and brittle. It doesn't matter if God seems remote and inaccessible. Just like a little child can never draw a bad picture, so a child of God can never utter a bad prayer. God, you see, accepts us just the way we are, and he accepts our prayers just the way they are. I'll post this on our website. Many of you ask. We have a resource page. I'll post this. So if you want it. As followers of Jesus, as people of God, as the body of Christ, let me say this. Prayer matters. Prayer is essential. Prayer matters. Prayer is essential. The Bible itself is a history of prayer, if you think about it. From the very beginning to the very end, the whole thing is about prayer. And what I mean by that, God is speaking to people, and people are listening. And as they listen, they can act on what they've heard, or they can ignore it. Plain and simple. It also works the other way. People speaking to God, and God listening, and in accordance to his desires, in accordance to his will, answering And you have this amazing narrative. The entire Bible is literally like, it's the history of prayer. It's the dialogue of God with his people. And Paul writes this letter to this young church. And he ends, he ends with this idea of prayer. In fact, you could say that his letter is the expression of his prayers for them. So that they would be united in spirit and purpose, growing more and more into the likeness of Jesus. It's his prayer for them. So today we're going to take a close look at this last portion of Paul's letter. And as we look at it, he's going to remind us, as he's reminding them, of the importance of prayer in our lives together. Let me say it again. The importance of prayer in our lives together. Together. 
So where have we been? The very first three chapters of that letter about everything that God has done for us. God as a way maker. Let me remind us of this. It says he blessed us. He's adopted us. He's united us. He's given us a rich inheritance through the presence of his Holy Spirit in our lives. He's given us new life in Jesus. He's extended incredible wealth and grace and kindness. He's done everything that he can do to end the hostility between us and him and and us and one another. He's brought peace among us. He's carefully joined us together to be be his presence in this world. And he's done that through his son Jesus. And what has he called us to do? What has he called us to do? Paul talks about it in the last three chapters of the letter. He says, be people of the light. Live as people of the light. Take off the mindset and attitudes of the world and put on the attitudes and mindset of Jesus. Imitate the lives of Jesus. Let our lives together shine brightly, so brightly in the darkness that it causes them to be drawn to the light. Daily, carefully, together, we ought to determine what pleases God and we need to do that together. That our lives in the world would literally be the good news that everybody's looking for. And last week we talked about the armor of God. And that armor was totally talked about. Paul talked about it. He wrote about it. He wanted us to understand it because it's all about protecting that life that we would have together. Protecting the unity. Protecting our ability to continue to grow together into the likeness of Jesus in the world. So let's look at today's passage. Ephesians 6, 18 through 24. And um, as I read this to you, I want to remind you that this book is a living word. And I'm going to read this passage. And I always want to remind us to listen. Because God may speak to you something just as I read it that you needed to hear. And everything else I share may not speak to you. But there's something in the reading of God's word that speaks. Let's never forget that. So, This is right at the end where Paul has talked about putting on the armor. He doesn't call this a piece of armor, which means it's it's even of more importance. Like, okay, all the pieces of armor, but then we have this other thing. Verse 18. Pray in the Spirit at all times. And on every occasion, stay alert and be persistent in your prayers for all believers everywhere. And pray for me too. Ask God to give me the right word so I can boldly explain God's mysterious plan that the good news is for Jews and Gentiles alike. I'm in chains now. This, this amazes me. I'm in chains now, still preaching this message as God's ambassador. So pray that I will keep on speaking boldly for him as I should. And to bring you up to date, Tychicus will give you a full report about what I'm doing and how I'm getting along. He's a beloved brother and a faithful helper in the Lord's work. I have sent him to you for this very purpose, to let you know how we're doing and to encourage you. Peace be with you, dear brothers and sisters, and may God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ give you love with faithfulness. May God's grace be eternally upon all who love our Lord Jesus Christ. Let's pray. Uh, Heavenly Father, thank you for this moment. Lord, I pray that, um, that you would speak to us. I pray that our minds would be clear, our hearts would be open to receive the words that you have for us. Lord, I pray this morning as I share, as I share from what you've given to me this week, I pray, Lord, that it would be helpful, that it would be truthful, and that it would be pleasing uh, to you. So what I'd like to do today is kind of work backwards um, in the scripture that we just, that just read. So I'm going to work backwards. And it's kind of interesting the way um, they write letters back then where the, the letter at the very end seems like it's a huge greeting, but, but it's, this, it's a lot of information packed in there and we kind of gloss over it. But I, I want us to recognize that Paul is sending this guy Tychicus. What a name. Can you imagine? <laughs> What's your name? Tychicus. Um, Paul's sending him to update this church in Ephesus on his life. For Paul, prayer is huge. Paul's asking this church to pray for him. His whole letter is about how he's praying for them. But he needs prayer. The Apostle Paul needs prayer. Even in the posture that he has, we've talked about this, where he says, I am a prisoner for Christ. (laughs) He has this great perspective. I'm in jail, but God's got a purpose to it. But even in him understanding that purpose, he needs prayer. And he asks for the church to pray for them. 
And Tychicus is going to come and share everything so that they can pray specifically for him. And I think that's profound. Are we humble enough in who we are? Are we humble enough in who we are to entrust others with everything that's going on in our lives so much that those people could tell others to pray for us? And I, I find very much that in our lives today, we, we keep our prayers private. You know, it's interesting when you manage a prayer chain for a church. I, I have to, I literally ask this question when I hear things about people's lives. Is it okay if I put it on the prayer chain? To me, that just seems like the most bizarre question in the world. <laughs> like we would want everybody to know what's going on in our lives so everybody in our lives could pray for us. And I want to challenge us with that. Are we humble enough to open our lives up to share what's going on so people can pray for us? And if not, that's a whole other conversation. That's a whole other conversation. Now, Paul gives us some really great descriptions for this church and for us on how to pray. Now, we prayed the Lord's Prayer. That's from at the beginning of church this morning. When, when the disciples came to Jesus and they noticed, man, you have a prayer life that we don't have. We want that. Can you teach us how to pray? And Jesus gave them the Lord's Prayer. Well, Paul is, is giving this church some specifics on how to pray. And the first thing he challenges them to do is to pray in the Spirit. When you pray, pray in the Spirit. Recognizing that the Holy Spirit is in our lives and in our hearts. And that's proof that God is there. That the Holy Spirit is in us. To pray in the Spirit. So let, let me be honest with you. Let me share with you how I've lived this out. And I, I've been learning this over the last year or so. I have, a, I have a prayer journal. In my journal, I, I have a list of prayer requests. And I used to pray through all of those, and it would be things that, that I wanted, things that I knew, um, things that I was hoping for, things that are going on in, in the lives of people here in our church community, praying specifically for things. And I think that's important. But you know what I found? I want to see God answer prayer. And I'm praying for specific things, and I'm looking for those answers. And when those specific things aren't answered, it feels like God isn't answering my prayers. I thought, huh, what do I do with that? And there's this great passage that talks about the Holy Spirit. And it says the Holy Spirit prays on our behalf when we don't have the words to pray. And I know that when we pray, it's all connected to God's will. Like when I ask for something, it's in accordance to God's plans and purposes. And I don't always know what his plans and purposes are in that moment. So maybe I need to let go of those. So I started doing this. I created some new prayer pages. And I just wrote down the names of everyone that God has called me to pray for. And it's many. And this is all I pray. This is my prayer. Heavenly Father, I pray that grace will be at work in so-and-so's life. I pray that the power of the Holy Spirit would move in their life to break through in a new way. That's it. I leave the rest to God because he knows what's going on in those people's lives. And he recognizes that I'm praying for people and I'm giving the freedom for him to work. And then what happens is as I look at people's lives, guess what I look for? What's God up to? What's God up to? I'll tell you, folks, it's changed everything. I see God answering prayer all the time in people's lives because I'm not looking for what I want to happen. I'm looking to see what God's doing in their life. His grace is at work. We talk about that all the time. The Holy Spirit is moving, and I start to see breakthroughs, and I get to be patient and wait on him. I'll tell you what, my prayer life, it's a great, it's a great experience now because there's no disappointment I'm just waiting on him to complete the work that he began in the people whom he loves. To pray in the Spirit, uh, right before this, um, Paul was talking about a piece of armor, the shield. Oh no, the sword. Get it right, Peter. The sword. The sword of the Spirit, which is God's word. I don't know if you guys do this, but one of the things that I've started to do in the same manner, in letting God guide my prayer life, I've gotten the habit of using scripture to guide it. In other words, I pray the scriptures I'm reading. 
I get together with pastors here in our community called the Church Without Walls. We get together on Thursdays and we pray together. And we have always used scripture to guide our prayer time. Because as people, we could get off on all these different tangents. But what we do is we use scripture to keep our focus so that we pray in the way that we know God to be, the way in which we know God acts. We allow his word to guide our scriptures. And so what I've gotten in the habit of doing when I have my daily devotional time each day and I'm reading some passages of scripture, when I'm done, I'm always asking the question, Lord, what is it that you said to me as I read your word? And then I take and I write a prayer based on what I read. Now, I, I don't want to just say this. I want to give you examples. So I'm going to open up my journal here. So I'm being vulnerable with you. I'm going to open up my journal here. So um, I was reading in Psalm 143. So let me read to you this little portion. kind of want to teach you how this works. I was in Psalm 143 not too many weeks ago. And let me read you the psalm. And this is from David, King David. We know David. David and Goliath, King David. He says this, Hear my prayer, O Lord. Listen to my plea. Answer me because you are faithful and righteous. Don't put your servant on trial, for no one is innocent before you. My enemy has chased me. He has knocked me to the ground, forces me to live in darkness like those in the grave. I'm losing hope. I'm paralyzed with fear. But I remember the days of old. I ponder all your great works and think about what you have done. I lift my hands to you in prayer. I thirst for you as parched land thirsts for rain. So I was reflecting on that in my own life, and I, I wrote this prayer down. So I'll just read it to you. It's where I was at that day. Lord, I want to thank you for your patience with me and your faithfulness. My enemies chase me. The enemies in my mind, the enemies in my thoughts, and they knock me down. I have felt hopeless and at moments felt paralyzed with fear. But I remember. I remember how you've been there in those dark moments of my life in the past. You've always healed. You've always forgiven. You've always provided. You've always guided. You have done and continue to do mighty and simple things in my life. Forgive me for not recognizing them. That is worthy of my praise and thanks to you. And where I am right now, I'm serving people who are parched and thirsty. Help me to guide them to you. In Jesus' name, amen. I just, I took that psalm and made it into a prayer. Do I do that every day? Not every day. But I'll tell you what, it, when you do this, your, your prayers are guided and, and it moves you to a different place. Paul talks about praying at all times. At all times. Many of us have scheduled times. But Paul's saying pray at all times. Pray throughout the day. Pray throughout the day. That, that means just taking moments throughout the day when the Holy Spirit puts something on your heart, a person, a circumstance, a situation, pray at all times. Some of us just pray in the morning and then pray before we go to sleep. What if you opened yourself up to say, I'm going to pray at all times. I'm going to pray at all times. Begin to add some times into your day when you pray. You know, one of the things I've recognized in my life is that um, when I do that, it draws me back into the presence of God. It draws me back into the, the purposes and missions of Jesus. It draws me back to the Holy Spirit. You know, I've shared this with you guys many times before that I have alarm on my watch that goes off every two hours. It just beeps. And I stop and I pray. Sometimes I have things specific to pray, but sometimes I don't. But it's just reminding me to pray at all times. At all times. I, I wonder, you know, we have these things on our phone where you can track how much you're on social media and all that kind of stuff. And if you go down and look at it, we spend a lot of time on these things. Um, I wish our TVs could do the same. You know, you, your remote, when you turn your TV on, it tells you how much time you spent in front of it. I mean, if you spent as much time praying as we did on these things, our TV and our phone, what, what would that look like? What would that look like? 
If prayer is that important, what, what would that look like if we actually did that? Paul goes on to say to pray on every occasion. Pray on every occasion. He's saying to pray in every circumstance that we're in. Every circumstance. How often are we just moving through our day and you come up on something and you're like, going, well, I wonder if, oh my gosh, what am I going to do about? And we just operate on our own strength. What if we took the time, that moment to just stop and to pray? We've had some interesting situations here with our technology in this building on, on Sundays. And, and what's happened now is we realize we can get all frustrated and, lo- frustrated and lost in it. And what we do now is we stop and we pray. Lord, we need you to fix this. And it seems like, well, does God care that much about our technology? Well, I'll tell you what. He's helped us work out of some real uh, difficult Sundays. Right before we came on live with you, where right at the last minute, uh, we needed some breakthrough and it happened. So I'm just learning that in everything, I ought to come before God and I ought to talk with him about it and ask for help in the circumstance that I'm in. And it doesn't matter how simple it is. It's teaching us to rely on him instead of relying on ourselves if we begin to pray on every occasion. And then Paul lastly says this. He says, be alert in your prayers. Be persistent in your prayers. And he's very specific. He says, be alert and persistent in your prayers for believers everywhere. Believers everywhere. So let me classify that. Let's go big C, little c. We need to be praying for our believers everywhere. Big C, the church. And we have to recognize that we are one body of Christ. And even though it may not seem like it in our world, with all of the different denominations and perspectives on our faith, Christian faith and everything, There's one church for the body of Christ. There's one. So we need to be praying for that. But then there's the little C, our church. Our church here. Paul's saying be alert and persistent in our prayers for one another. Our prayers for one another. So let me remind us, and I said this earlier, we cannot pray for one another the way we could if we're not in relationship with one another. And I can't emphasize our growth groups enough and I, my heart's desires that everyone would be in them. And th- this is why. And I talked with people about it this last week during our webinar. The first two questions we ask are, where are you seeing God at work in your life? And where are you feeling challenged or invited in your life? And when you're in a growth group, it's a safe place. And you begin to discover that. And you begin to share with one another. And we pray for one another. It's a high value on relationship. It's a high value on relationship with one another. And I I have to tell you, I think the most important part of our growth groups is that first moment. Because we're praying for each other. And if you ask anybody that's been in one consistently for a long period of time, they will tell you how life-changing it is, how life-giving it is to pray for people. To pray for people you know. And to see God working in their lives. It's, it's, It's necessary It's being united in spirit purpose. It's being one family. It's being one family, and we can't do it. Um, Keep a prayer journal. I've noticed in our growth groups now that many are starting to write down the prayers of everybody. Initially, it's because you're going to have to pray for somebody. (laughs) and You want to be ready for whoever you're going to have to pray for. But, But now we're writing them all down so that throughout the week we can continue to pray for the people that we prayed for in that moment. And I think that's important because then when you see them next time, you can say, so how's that going? And like Tychicus, they can report back and tell you how that's going so that you can pray more specifically for them. I think Paul has given us much to pray about for the church, for our church, a community of Jesus followers. I think we could actually take this letter that he wrote and it could be a prayer guide for us to pray for one another in our church and to pray for the Big C Church. This is literally a letter that he's written and it reflects his heart. It is literally the things that he is praying for them. When you started that letter, very early on, he he says, I'm praying this for you. It's a great topical list of things that we could pray for one another. So if you don't know people yet in our church, You could pray this for our church community, little c, but you could also pray this for the church, big c. Can I just list some of them? And I'm going to go quickly here. Paul prayed that they would have wisdom. 
He prayed that their hearts would be flooded with the light of Jesus. He prayed that they would have confident hope. He prayed that they would understand God's power. He prayed that they would be empowered by the inner strength of the Holy Spirit. He prayed that Christ would be at home in their hearts. He prayed that they would experience the love of Christ. He prayed that they would lead lead lives uh, worthy of their calling. He prayed that they would have patience with one another. He prayed that they would make every effort to be bound together. He prayed that they would grow to be mature followers of Jesus. He prayed that each person would do their part to help make that happen. He prayed that they would no longer live like the world, but be lights in the darkness. He prayed that they would throw off their old way of living and live into this new life that looked like Jesus. He prayed that they would live truthful lives. He prayed that they would have words that were spoken to others that would be words of encouragement, not words that would tear people down. He prayed that they would work hard and then take the fruit of their labor and give to those in need. He prayed that they would get rid of bitterness, rage, slander, and anger. He prayed that they would imitate Jesus and everything they do. He prayed that they would live a life of love. He prayed that they would avoid sexual immorality and grieve and greed and live perfect lives. He's, he's prayed that they wouldn't be fooled by things of darkness, but live as people as the light. He prayed that their life together would expose the evil of the world simply by the way they lived. He prayed that they would have healthy marriages where husbands and wives actually loved each other and treated each other with mutual respect and sacrifice and submitted to one another. He prayed that as a church, they would love one another as Christ loves them since they're his bride. He prayed that that their families would be made up of parents who loved and respected their children and raised them and taught them the ways of Jesus, encouraged them, and in the same manner that their children would respect them because of that. He prayed that they would do everything as if they were doing it for the Lord. Not a lot of stuff. I mean, you could open up that letter and go, I want to pray for the church today. Open up Ephesians, man. I'm going to pray that one. I'm going to pray that one. But you know what Paul's greatest prayer was? The theme of this whole letter. His prayer was for unity. Think about that. In the times we're living in right now, his prayer was for unity. You've heard me say this over and over again, and I hope it's embedded in your heart, in your mind. You know these words. I really think it's a high calling for our church. That we will be united in spirit and purpose together, growing more and more like Jesus. Unity. We should be united in that. Jesus prayed in John 17, this prayer. And I brought this up at the very beginning of this series. This is Jesus' prayer. Listen, he's praying to God and he's praying for you and I. He's praying for the church. My prayer is not for them alone. I pray also for those who will believe in me through their message. That all of them may be one, Father Just as you are in me and I am in you, may they also be in us so that the world may believe that you have sent me. I have given them the glory that you gave me that they may be one as we are one. I in them and you in me so that they may be brought to complete unity. Then the world will know that you have sent me and have loved them even as you have loved me. Today, more than any day, we need to be praying for unity, especially amongst believers. I need to say this as your pastor because it weighs heavy on me. There is more division right now, more division than I've ever seen in my lifetime in the church, amongst believers. We have let the political arena and many voices that do not reflect the heart of Jesus have our ears, our thoughts, our opinions, and for many, it has grabbed our hearts. It has created divisions. We need to be praying for the body of Christ to be united in spirit. Seeing the Capitol stormed a week or so ago with banners raised that said, Jesus is my Savior. That's not the heart of God. 
Those are not the ways of Jesus. That was not led by the Holy Spirit. This stuff currently is dividing friendships within the church. It's breaking up families in the church. It's creating divisions over things that we can and cannot talk about or don't feel like talking about it. And you need to know it is spreading a confusing picture to the world, to our country, to those who do not know Jesus. It's spreading a confusing picture of who the church is and what Jesus stands for. Instead of us sharing our lives together and living and loving like Jesus, bringing light into the darkness of people's lives around us so that they can discover the good news of Jesus Christ. Folks, this weighs heavy on me. It ought to weigh heavy on you. Our lives give testimony to who Jesus Christ is. So let me ask a question. Do we pray enough? If prayer is listening for God's voice and direction and acting on it, if prayer is us speaking and waiting on God for his answers with great hope and expectation, how does it compare to the amount of time that we spend listening to the voices of the world and the voices of television and the voices of social media? What if we spent as much time in the presence of that, what if we spent time in the presence of God in a posture of prayer, seeking after him and him alone? Jesus said, until now, you have not asked for anything in my name. Ask and receive and your joy will be made complete. The writer of Chronicles says this. It's kind of a narrative on the the life of David. All the kings. A prophetic word. Many of us know these words. If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven and I will forgive their sin and will heal their land. We need healing in our country right now. We need people brought back together. We need to be humble and we need to pray together. We need to seek his face and trust and hope and believe that he will heal our land. So this week as a community, can we humbly commit to this? Can we pray at every meal? Take the time before we eat the food. And it doesn't matter whether you're on the fly going through McDonald's. Stop and pray. Let food be your trigger. And let's pray. Let's pray for our country. Let's pray for unity and peace. Let's pray for our new president, that he would lead well. Let's pray for an end to the COVID virus. Let's pray for our kids. Let's pray for our marriages. Let's pray for those that are in need. Let's pray for churches. Let's pray for provision and unity in those churches. Let's pray against the darkness of lies and ask for the light of truth. Let's pray for our leaders. Let's pray for all pastors. And would you please pray for me? I need your prayers. Let me end with this. Mother Teresa, a person who went to the margins of life and helped the marginalized. I used to pray that God would feed the hungry or do this or that. But now I pray that he will guide me to do whatever I'm supposed to do, what I can do. I used to pray for answers, but now I'm praying for strength. I used to believe that prayer changes things. But now I know that prayer changes us. And then we can change things. Well, that's what I have for us this morning. And as I always ask, let's take a moment and reflect. The Holy Spirit speaks to us. God is speaking to you. What did you hear him say this morning? And what do you think he's asking you to do with what you heard?
We've been singing this every Sunday through our journey through Ephesians. No, we may end next Sunday with this song, even though we're not in the letter anymore, but maybe a song that we revisit, but I pray that uh, all the conversations we've had, that this song will just yank you back to it. You know that God has already shown us the way, and the way is Jesus. He has. God is the way maker. He showed us the way through his son, Jesus, and we got a choice to make. Are we going to live into the ways of Jesus? Because guess what? God's empowered us to be the way makers now. He reaches the world through us. He heals the world through us. He changes the world through us. Jesus is the way. Us to be way makers. So as we sing this, just reflect on what you heard. You are here, moving in our midst. I worship you. I worship you. You are here, moving in this place. I worship you. I worship you. Keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. We make a miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. You are here, touching every heart. I worship you, I worship you. You are here. Healing every heart. I worship you. I worship you. You are here, turning lives around. I worship you. I worship you. You are here, bending every heart. I worship you. Way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness. My God, that is who you are. Way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness. My God, that is who you are. Even when I don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop, never stop working. Never stop, never stop working. Even when I don't see it you're working. Even when I don't do it you're working. You never stop, never stop working. Never stop, never stop working. Even when I don't see it you're working. Even when I don't do it you're working. You never stop, never stop working. Never stop, never stop working. You are here. Touching every life, I worship you. I worship you. You are here, meeting every need. I worship you. I worship you. Waymaker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness. My God, that is who you are. Waymaker. Miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness. My God, that is who you are. My God, that is who you are. My God, that is who we are. My God, that is who we are. My God, that is who we are. Well, let me pray the prayer that um, I pray when I'm out um, and cars drive through the food pantry. Let me pray that for you. But Heavenly Father, I want to thank you for our church community and who you've called us to be. Lord, I pray that you would watch over, guard, and protect 
and meet every need. I pray, Heavenly Father, that we would know the joy, the love, and the hope that come from you through Jesus. And may that encourage us to be lights in a world with darkness, that our lives might be messages of hope. In Jesus' name, amen. Hey, thanks for being with us. Um, Remember, save the date next Sunday, partnership, family gathering, meeting. We'd love to have you all there. Hey, have a great week.